Thank you, Liz, for the introduction. Uh, it's great to be here uh, today and indeed to talk about co-designing interventions for adults with congenital heart disease. I have no disclosures. Let me start with asking you a question. Imagine that someone comes to you and say, I have a brilliant idea to design a new bike. The thing is, you need to ride this bike backwards. I'm quite sure that most among us would say, this won't happen. Uh, the likelihood that I'm, bike, that I'm buying that bike and using that bike will not happen. And probably there is only one person who will buy this bike and that's this one. What you also would think is, if you really want to design a new bike, ask us, ask us as future customers what we would like to see in this bike, what we expect from this bike. Con try to design this bike together with us. And that is indeed where um, co-design is all about. Co-design is also known as participatory design. And we know that when you look in the literature, there is no uniform definition on co-design. Um, but all the definitions, they come um, together around some key features. And bottom line, it can be said that co-design is an approach to design attempting to actively involve all stakeholders in the design process to help ensure the results meet their needs and it is usable. Thinking about this bike, ask people what do you expect, what is working for you, how can you make a bike that is usable. Again, there is no uniform definition on co-design. And even more, there are some terms that are often used interchangeably, like co-creation and co-production. To a certain extent, these things are different and they do have different characteristics, but still they are used interchangeably. I don't want to go into a um, conceptual definition uh, or conceptual discussion with you uh, today, because I wanted to see what is known on co-design, co-creation, and co-production in congenital heart disease. And when you are using these terms in PubMed, you will see that you will have four hits, only four. And these four uh, are studies that were developed or, or that were conducted in pediatric cardiology. So none in adult congenital heart disease. There is even a study done in prenatal uh, diagnosis and prenatal care. Of course, it is a limited approach, only having these three terms, co-design, co-creation, co-production. So if you expand it a little bit to user experiences, usability, user design, you get more hits, 43 to be precise. If you go through this list of 43 uh, papers, not all of them are studies, but when you go through this list and you look at what has been co-created, it is all smartphone apps. No other interventions have been uh, developed in co-creation. Smartphone uh, apps to um, promote physical activities in patients, to promote healthy behavior, to um, increase the level of knowledge of the patients. Uh, smartphone apps where the medical file, medical records of the patient is included with ECG so that they can communicate with uh, physicians who are not uh, their regular uh, cardiologists. Of course, the tricky thing here is that these developments are mainly based on what is called formative research. And formative research um, means that you listen to the experience of the patients or the users or the families 
and you go back to the drawing table. You develop, you redraw the intervention, and you go back to the patients. And of course, the opinion and the needs of the patients are integrated in that, but it is not the real co-design as we are talking about today. So, again, there is some work done, but definitely, um, I used this, mor this morning the term wasteland. I think we can use it here as well. Let me um, explain or let me discuss some ideas that we have um, where we want to use co-design uh, methodologies in congenital heart disease. And one specific study is the Stepstones study. Maybe some of you were in the session before at the Science Box 2, where Evalena Brat uh, has presented the findings of Stepstones. Stepstones is, stands for the Swedish Transition Effects Project supporting teenagers with chronic medical conditions. We developed the Stepstones transition program for young people with chronic conditions to help them uh, in transitioning from being a dependent child to become an independent adult who is able to manage their own condition and at the same time to help them transferring from pediatric care to adult care facilities. There were different components in this, uh, in, in this uh, program and um, mainly working with the transition coordinator, meeting transition coordinators uh, in the hospital at the outpatient uh, clinic, that was the key. We developed this based on needs assessments with the patients um, and what we learned from the patients, then we Im kind of integrated that or we used the intervention mapping strategies. So we were not using co-design at all. Stepstones was first tested in congenital heart disease and the results were just uh, uh, described. Now we are testing this in diabetes patients and we want to further expand it. But what is the new development is that we also were wondering, instead of giving this intervention on site with people in the outpatient clinic, can we do this on a digital uh, way? And this is what we are developing now. We got funded to uh, implement the Digi Stepstones uh, project. Uh, but what is fascinating is that we also want to have an extra part on that, is that we want to develop this Digi Stepstones project adapted to persons with intellectual disabilities. This is a group of people that is traditionally excluded from studies in congenital heart disease and I dare to believe also in other uh, areas. Whereas there is quite a substantial part of patients with congenital heart disease that is having intellectual disabilities. So we really need to, uh, to see is what are the needs for transitional care and can we adapt our care to transitional, to, to the needs of in people with intellectual disabilities. Here, the co-creation becomes an important thing because we cannot just transfer DG Stepstones for everyone to this group of people. What is the idea that we have? And we don't know if we can implement this because uh, it's only in October that we will hear if you are funded for this um, co-design uh, part. So what we want to do is to use an adapted experience-based co-design methodology comprising five phases. In the first phase, we plan to do qualitative interviews with both the patients uh, with intellectual disabilities and their parents. This is typically done as a needs assessment. Uh, this is where we hear what would work for you, what are you, what do you need, and so on. Typical, what we do here is to video record these interviews. Because these video recordings in a second phase will be used to make a trigger film. And in this trigger film, uh, the different touch points will be included. So this is what we learned from the interviews. 
these are the things that we need to keep for the next phases. In the third phase, we will use this trigger film and work with clinical and research staff and see what do you think uh, when you hear this? Uh, how, what reflections? How do we need to change uh, our approach? What do we need to bear in mind when we come to the developmental phase? Then we do the same with patients and parents. So to a certain extent, they see themselves and what they have said, but they also hear what other people have said and they can try to relate on that. Does this, is this in line with, with how I see the thing, uh, what my priorities are? And then finally, then we really come to the co-design. Then we plan to do four joint patient, parent and staff workshops uh, where we make different groups and where people are sitting, okay, this is what we learned, how can we translate this to the, um, um, to the transition program on a digital format. Once again, we hope that we can do so. Um, more to learn about that in October, if we have the funding, yes or no. I would like to try, uh, I would like to take the opportunity, now that I'm having the floor here, uh, to raise some attention to a paper that was published earlier this year in the Methods Corner of the European Journal of Cardiovascular Nursing. This is a paper that is written by a group from Flinders University in Adelaide, Australia. And it's, it's no surprise that Robin, coming from Australia, is talking about co-design, that the group of Flinders is working on co-design. So clearly Australia is uh, a place where we can learn uh, from. But definitely have a look at this paper, use the QR codes, and uh, you can learn what this Flinders group is doing. On that. Let me come to the conclusions of this presentation and let me give you some take home messages. Co-design in congenital heart disease is in its infancy. Little is done so far. And the first co-design projects are conducted in pediatric cardiology, not in adult congenital heart disease. The development of transitional care interventions are well suited for co-design, and that's what we hope to do with the DIGI Stepstones adapted for people with intellectual disabilities. And it's not because no studies have been done in congenital heart disease, that there is nothing that we can rely on. For instance, congenital heart disease area can learn from uh, co-designed behavioral change interventions developed in other areas. So we should really expand uh, our horizon and see what is happening in other population, other cardiac population or non-cardiac populations. How can we use that? Because what is learned there is to a certain extent maybe also transferable to congenital heart disease. Thank you so much for your attention.